Hello there, welcome to Waste Garage. I'm standing here next to the uh, moped or scooter of my daughter. Uh, first I'm going to take it out for a ride and see if it makes these 45-46 kilometers that she claims. I think that's right, but I just want to double check and kind of document it. Then uh, I got in my hands on a high speed variator that should take up the top speed of this little thing a bit. So I will give that a try. So first, time to go for a spin. So here is a high speed variator kit and if this will <laughs> if this will work and how this will work well I don't know let's see uh, what makes me a bit puzzled is that the kit is said to be for this Honda but in the little uh, document that follows with the kit then there's only things mentioned with uh, well about Minarelli and Viaggio and things like that and there's lots of things that oh if you have that uh, design of that thing you should have a little washer there and you know there are lots of small details that well just aren't included in the kit um, so pff, will this work or not I don't know but I will have to take a chance I will open up here and see what it looks like Okay, so the belt is all new here. I replaced it uh, not that long time ago. And when I did that job, I made a little locking tool to lock the variator. Now the crankshaft is locked. No. Yeah, this one is has a larger inner diameter on the inside. Worth to remember. rollers from the original now they are not symmetrical and I read in the book that it's important that they are located in the right right way in the in the variator so are they in the right way or not See, they are uh, that way on one side and another way on the other side. And how are they here? 
No, they've been messed around with. They are not in the same order. So, according to the booklet, they should be. Let me see now. Can you see this? The metal side should be facing that way on the upper side so they should be like that and then that one was not correct ah. that one was correct and i don't know but that one should be like this like that Good. Now these are symmetrical, but on the in this thing they are not symmetrical. So then I will <laughs> then I wonder are these located in the right position or not? There's a description in the booklet but the image in the booklet is crap so now should I know what is right and what is wrong ah well easy is they don't slide all the way let's see here yeah like this they slide all the way but here they were probably located in the right direction then Not protruding that much. Let's see. They are a little, little bit different. Yeah. This is probably correct. And then the small weights. Saying what was it in the weights? Six. These ones are six point three. I haven't got a clue if that is good or not. Let's not look in this one again. So the metal side is facing that way on the top side. Now, how will I know if things line up the way they should and so on? Yeah, when I hold them like this, the distance from Let's say edge there to edge there and edge there to edge there. They are. Are they exactly the same? That's a good question. Because I'm just holding things and I can. Well, they're not miles away. I know that it's down to half a millimeter here sometimes when you look in the description, but seem to be reasonably correct then uh, this thing should fit like this but for some reason they have included a set of springs for the clutch so Polini seems to have the opinion that that you should change the way that this grips if it means that this is a lighter spring that makes it easier for the discs here to go apart is that the way it is don't know but one would like this this diameter to be big and that one to be small so maybe that's the theory now i have to take this thing apart somehow <laughs> mm -hmm. well I have built this little tool maybe not that little let me see now is it also 17 here no it's not is it no 
figure. 19. There we go. Handy tool. Oh, and there are some kind of almost like brake shoes, clutch shoes here. Let's see. One shouldn't touch that if you have some grease on your finger. Like that then. There should not be any debris on that thing because that's a bearing surface. You see now. Now how does this thing work? Let's see. Well, the trick was to put two drills, drill tools like this, upside down, and then just clamp them at the bench. And then uh, kind of upside down, I used this <laughs> uh, spanner, 39 millimeters, so it's quite big and now it's I can rotate it by hand you no yes I can oh yeah if I, <clears throat> if I push down a bit I also checked the spring this spring it's at least half a millimeter smaller in diameter uh, that one is this one is four millimeters and that one is well bigger at least so let's see now I still have to use this one now, will this come flying in my face or not? Well, small, thin, not okay. Just out of curiosity, I will measure. So, this spring is not much bigger than four, but it's bigger than four. It's 4.25, maybe 4.2, 4.25, something, uh, but it's also way shorter. So this is a much stiffer spring, for sure. Much stiffer spring. Now, is there something else? Seats very well. Okay. Like that then. Now, there are also small clutch springs that one should replace. Five turns. Six turns. Depends on how you count. No. Same number of turns. Is the diameter any different? Okay, no 1.85 millimeters. 1 1.75. 1.75, what did I say? 1.85, but there's paint on this one. I really wonder if there's any real difference. Should I mess with those springs? Well, they're they're <laughs> they're in the kit, but is it easy to to swap springs? Let's see. Looks like I need some kind of a, a hook. That's not all that easy. I have to give this some thought as well. So I have been thinking about, about these springs. They are one tenth of a mil in larger in diameter. But I think that's due to the paint. And the paint made me think a bit. This original club spring is sprayed white that must be a code for its uh, spring force somehow that one is blue and it's softer so well i would think that they have some kind of standard down in italy for springs and spring forces now these when one looks a bit closer 
one can see that there is yellow color here on all of all three of them they have yellow color so i think that these springs and those are equivalent at least and if they are harder if they are harder not i don't think they are but if they are harder then you will just have to have more speed on this for it to grip and I see no reason why you would need that, really. I can understand the difference of those because that one will, will decrease the diameter more quickly at the rear, which will, in theory, increase speed. And potentially also allowing the belt to creep further out here, which will increase that diameter. And that's, yeah, sure, that's a speed improvement. But the clutch grip. Why would you want higher speed on that one too? Yeah, okay, in the booklet you can... Well, again... Oh, this is weird. I can imagine that a highly tuned two-stroke might be a bit off its torque. And you might need a bit of more evolutions on this thing. But this is a four-stroke, and I thought this kit was made for this bike, but it also seems to be very universal at the same time. So, um, I will say that those springs are equal enough. They are both yellow, and they have just about the same diameter. So, and, ah, by the way, if you're tempted to take things, these things apart, put some paper over these little clips, because <laughs> I'm just lucky to have three right now. The third one just shot itself away and I was lucky to find it um, but let's put that one back now no. that one isn't really in there they are I don't know if it matters or if they will rotate or not but I put them on the inside so that if they when they spin they will Try not to fly off, but well, maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, but now... Hmm. Put in the paper here. I almost... I made a little color mark. Can get the nut back in position. Uh, because I will not succeed in getting the torque right, just like that. Boom. Yeah, it's not there. I need to do this, but the other way around. I'll be right back. Yep. There we have it. I have the nut in the same position as the last time. Interesting. Now... I have always had a bit of paper protection here because there's there are rollers for the bearing on the on the inside there. I just want to give them a little bit of bearing grease. Okay, bearing grease, but. Before that, I have to squeeze this thing in here. Yeah, I'd say that this was quite a bit easier. To do then with that spring now. I shouldn't put a lot of grease here but because I don't know if it can be thrown out and 
Okay, so this one is tightened. It's important that it really sits, otherwise you might just be squeezing the belt and then this will work itself loose. Okay, um, clutch belt. Should it be like this? It's really loose. Hmm. Well, well, I will give it a try. Maybe I shouldn't have messed with this one. tool yeah this broken this broken seal I will have to put some extra seal on there just putting a little bit over the head I'm just That part sits here, right? Hmm. Maybe there's a piece missing here. Okay. The starter is in position. Okay, nothing forgotten. All right, so I'll just clean it up a bit and uh, put all the tools back. Then I'm very curious to see how this thing runs, if it runs. <laughs>
yeah, it runs well, uh, really well. Um, as you could see, it just about hits 60, close to it at least. And uh, I must say, I'm a bit surprised that it kind of climb, climbs hills easily. It's, I thought that maybe at low speed or uphill, the higher gearing would make it a bit, you know, off pace or whatever you should say. But it's it's easy to ride. It feels like it's been designed to run with this variator. So um, I'm pleasantly surprised, I must say. Now, um, I had my daughter to make a little test ride with it also. I mean, it's, it's her moped in a way. And then uh, I said, yeah, go for a little ride with it and so on. Then, but I said, <laughs> I, I will not keep it like this. You know, it's not really following the legislation. Um, but she came back and said, oh, <laughs> dad, please don't, don't take this off the bike. It runs so much better now. And I said, but you, you know, I don't want you to be out speeding and, and so on. It's not, you shouldn't be allowed to ride more than uh, 45 and so on. Um, and, but then she said, but you know, <laughs> it runs so much better at 45. And I understand her because uh, she says that when you ride it at 45 or 46, maybe, then it kind of hits the rev limiter. And then it's kind of feels a bit uh, strangled. With this thing, it kind of runs freely. So when she kind of hits that 45 or maybe even 50, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Then it runs freely, easily, rev limiter doesn't hit anything. And I would think it even runs a bit more economical, I would say. So would I recommend this variator to someone? Sure, why not? The bike feels kind of, yeah, as I said, it kind of feels designed to be with this variator. Um, now, of course, legislation, yeah, sure. I don't know how strict things are in your area, but around here, no big deal, I would say. Um, but, well, it's up to you. Uh, I think it must say somewhere in those papers that it's only for racing use. Mm, go racing with this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, anyhow, it's a fun little thing. If you want to, go for it. That's all from Oiskar today. Take care. Bye-bye.